Good morning. We're back at it here. Well, early afternoon. It is a Sunday afternoon. Hopefully a better Sunday than yes, the last week was, right? We'll see. Dad's getting some spraying done. He is putting pre-emerge herbicides on our corn ground. So he's got all of the beans that are planted to this point sprayed, done, pre-emerge is on them. Um, but just got started on the corn today. He's working on load number three at the moment. Should be able to get most of the corn that we've got planted sprayed today. We are gonna jump into Gator here and go start looking around at some fields and see if anything is dry enough that we can work. Uh, I would like to plant this afternoon, but we got some tillage we gotta do before that, so let's go see if the fields are dry enough. Sunday morning, Saturday morning, yesterday morning, we had another 1800, so just under two tenths. But then yesterday was a pretty good drying day. We were uh, looking around last night thinking, eh, hey, maybe we could go somewhere, but decided to give it the night. Uh, today is beautiful, sunny, 70s, and we should be able to find somewhere to work, but we gotta go uh, look around and see what fields are ready. Problem with when we get to the end of planting season, or the first half done, is that we've got all the dry tile fields already done. So now we're down to some of the fields that dry a little bit slower, which uh, means you gotta give them an extra day to dry out sometimes. I guess it was Thursday during the day when we got that rain, not overnight Wednesday, because Phil came out here Thursday morning with the uh, disc and had gotten started in this field uh, before he, it, we got rained out at like 9.30 or something that morning. So uh, just looking to see if this one is dried off enough wasn't a great sign there it doesn't look terrible yeah it's it's okay oh yeah that's okay it's stuck briefly to the shovel but that breaks apart it's warm it's sunny it's gonna dry out this would go so if nothing else we can get the disc out here and keep that moving and then hopefully Phil can start planting beans later but let's go check the field next door the farm next door and see if uh we might be able to get the field cultivator over there so we can plant some corn. So this field over here was wheat last year. Dad sprayed the volunteer wheat off oh, three, four weeks ago. Uh, we do have a big low spot here that holds water and there's a big wet spot right there, but there's probably a 75% chance that even if I can plant this whole thing right now, it's gonna drown out at some point between now and when we harvest it. So we are not going to wait on this little bit to finish, to be ready. We're gonna see if the main part of the field is ready. Uh, come down here and get it if we can. I don't know. This is kind of the top of the ridge. It's not the ideal place to check, but let's see. It might be a little sandy here, actually. Yeah, absolutely. You can see it's still just a little damp, but we're not gooey underneath. It's not sticky, and this does have some sand content in it, so it breaks apart a little bit easier. This spot would go. Um, let's see some heavy ground back over there there's some real heavy ground up there but again that's probably going to drown out anyway so i don't know we'll go check it so this corner also floods it might not drown out water usually gets off of this side fairly quick but right there's kind of the water line and you can see how bare the dirt is here so I opened this up with the shovel and um, it breaks apart fairly well. Some of this stuff down a little deeper is gooey, but I don't think it'll cause us any issues. Might look a little wet and clumpy when we uh, first break it open, but we'll give it an hour, a couple hours to dry out while we get the planter around and stuff and it should be fine. Uh, one thing to note uh, that I've seen in a bunch of our fields this year, but we haven't talked about yet. So you may remember from last fall that we used a lot of uh, chicken litter as our fertilizer. Uh, we have a uh, egg laying facility probably 35, 40 miles from here and they sell their litter and um, we use that as our fall broadcast fertilizer instead of using potash or MAP or some other commercial form. 
Um, we really like to do that in all of our wheat stubble that we can and also um, we put it in a lot of the uh, bean stubble after the beans come off before we plant corn in it the following year. There's a lot of phosphorus in it, a lot of nitrogen in it, um, just really good for soil health. Well, the facility that we get that from almost two years ago now, they had a case of bird flu come through and uh, they ended up having to turn over their chickens inventory, if you, if you will. Um, so they had a lot of carcasses to dispose of. And the way that they did that was by composting them with some of their litter that they had. Uh, anyway, so last year they were selling off this compost, which consisted of litter mixed in with birds that had gotten bird flu, let's say. And so that's what we spread. We spread it at a little higher rate. Uh, I think it was still pretty good stuff, but we now have chicken bones all over all over our fields that we spread it in. And you can see them really well right here. So we spread it before we worked the weed stubble, before we used the ripper. So a lot of it got worked in and turned into the soil, but then when the water level raises and it washes all of that light residue away, uh, you can see all of the um, leftovers. So we have these bones kind of all over our fields. Lots of lots of legs. Occasionally you'll find a over here. A knot a, a knot leg. <laughs> it's yeah, it's 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 whatever. It is what it is. It's fine. There's one. That whole deal was a bad deal that they had to do that with the birds as it was. Um, but hopefully it doesn't happen again. They're back up and running. We can just run straight regular old chicken litter, which is really good for our soil. All right, so we jumped across the river here, and uh, this field is going to corn as well, but it was bean stubble last year, not wheat stubble. And this one has some pockets where the water sat. We're not gonna check that one. We're gonna go check one over here. But it also has a lot of sand. There's a sand ridge that runs across here. Uh, and then it drops off into really heavy river bottom ground in the back. So we're going to check this. We'll check some of the pockets here. This, this one looks like it had some water laying on it at some point, but I'm guessing it's fine just based on feel. We'll stick a shovel in. Yeah, this is fine. Totally fine. Yep. Um, what I'm really concerned about in this one is the heavy ground in the back, the, the river bottom ground. Um, but if we could come down here and work both of these, that would be awesome. And then we actually have some corn stalks across the road going to beans that we could also work if they're ready. So we'll check them after we go back here. Yeah, so you can see we go from sand ridge and then it just drops down into river bottom. And there's probably, I don't know, 10, 12 feet of elevation change between the top of that ridge and right down here. And this is the wettest spot on the whole farm and it's a little damp on top. It's not great. But I bet we could work this. The neighbor worked his at some point. He's got a little bit of that same stuff. So let's see what it feels like right here. Yeah. That's gooey. But that was a deep slice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it. This is probably too wet. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna do it. But it's probably too wet. Shoot. I wanted to come down here and get all this done today, done it. Well, we can do the other side. Let's go check across the road. So we had done some tiling on this field uh, two years ago now. I think we had wheat here. And uh, so we actually ripped it with the 2730 last fall, the corn stalks, because uh, the tile lines settle and they get rough and the, the ripper helps level stuff off a little bit better than the disc does. And so we think we can get through this with our field cultivator. And uh, it should should work through fine. Just depends on how the corn stalks flow. But it should do a better job than the disc will in this scenario. 
Um, this spot's not great. It's not as bad as across the road, and we are in the bottom of the low spot. So I'm guessing the rest of the farm is okay. We'll check somewhere else, but we can probably get here with field cultivator. No, I was wrong. This stuff is is too wet. Um, I whatever, it's fine. We're gonna give it another day. Maybe tomorrow we can come here, but not today. Uh, this is the field you may have heard me in the past talk about. Uh, we had a literal brick factory in this field back in the day, 100 years ago or whenever it was. So it's pretty heavy clay over here. All right, well, I looked at a couple more fields and um, the the first one that we looked at, the corn stalks will go, and basically anything that was dissed corn stalks from the fall, I think is okay today. Uh, that wheat stubble field, the volunteer weed in it. Um, I think that one will go. So we're going to go there with the field cultivator now. The uh, chisel corn stalks, the field by the river, another field with some muck pockets on it. They're just not quite there yet. So we're going to go do this one and see how it goes. Uh, hopefully Phil will be around later. He can run the disc and then we can both be planting later tonight. Uh, and then maybe we can have a bigger day tomorrow. I don't know, but we'll at least get something done. Okay, um, well, we're getting started here, making our second round, and, well, it's really wet along these trees. That was, was not the place to look, which we didn't look there, but it's, uh, it's wetter than I like. Also, all of this residue has given me some trouble. I don't know if this is going to work like I want it to. So, we do have some dust, especially out in the middle of the field. Like, it's, it's not too wet there, but it is too wet on some of the ends and the edges. However, it's May 12th, and it's not super late yet, but it's late enough that I do things that I wouldn't do in April, as far as ground conditions go. But the problem is, all this residue from this wheat, volunteer wheat that's out here, it's all brown and dead, but I think it's a little gooier underneath that, a little bit wetter, and it's, it's plugging my packer up, especially right there in the middle, and then I get stuff start pushing, little piles. And we're not getting a very good smooth finish either. And I don't like it. I'm thinking that this might have to get worked twice and that we would be much better off with the disc the first time over, kind of chop this stuff up. Very yes, see now our packer's pushing. So we got to put the wheels down on it. Lift up that center section so that that stuff that's sliding in front of it there will work under it. Which it did there, but that's not... Ideal. Let me set it back down. And see it's pushing right away. As soon as I set it down, we're getting all plucked up with mud. Not good. Not good. So I think we're actually going to pull out of here. When we get up to the road here, we're going to go get the disc and we're going to work those corn stalks next door so Phil can plant beans. And then we're just going to keep moving all the way across this field. That seems to be the best course of action. I don't know that we're going to plant any corn today. We got like 37 acres. 32 acres that dad did the other day that I can probably plant, but I don't think we're going to get this one ready to go. It's all right. You do what you can do. Sometimes things don't work like you think they will. <laughs> That's okay. Um, shoot. Yeah, the disc is the right tool for this situation, so we're going to switch it up there. While we're waiting for this thing to fold up so we can go home, I, uh, I better say happy Mother's Day to um, my wife, my mother, my mother-in-law, my sisters, and all of the rest of you moms out there. Thanks for all you do. All right, change of, change of scenery here. And we got lots of dust now. Like I said, these corn stalks that were just dissed in the fall, they're a little drier. And we're not going as deep. So we're gonna work our way across this field. Phil got a little bit of it done the other day. We got one pass to make there, and then he's up to the lane. We're going to work across over to there. We've got 35 acres on the other side of the lane, and then that field on the other side of that is where we just were with the field cultivator that didn't go very well. So at least we'll get this done, and then it could be planted later today. Making some progress across here. Uh, this field's got a, a house lot, a couple of house lots actually on that corner there, so the rows get a little shorter here. We just got done with the long rows. Uh, we got to work our way out to the road there yet, but there is uh, 65 acres on this side. There's 35 on the other side. Phil maybe had 10 done. I don't know, something like that. So uh, 
probably take us another hour to an hour and a half, something like that, to finish this side up. Not too bad. Just about made our way across this first field here. That field right across the road there is our uh, March planted soybeans that you can run from here. Ah, oh, they're beautiful. Looks fantastic. So we'll try and get over there tomorrow sometime to look at them again and uh, do a stand count. I just, we're so busy right now that when the weather is good, we need to be planting or working around or doing whatever it is we can do. So we don't have a lot of time to do stuff like that. But we'll get there. It's dusty here. Most of this field has worked up really well. There was a little spot in the low ground up there by the road that I thought was, eh, it's a little rough, but not horrible. And the rest of it has all been really good. So we got some end rows to finish up and we moved to the uh, other side of the buildings over there. Just got a high coolant temp code. It was up to 227 or eight there. Stopped and let her cool down now. Uh, the other day on this tractor, Phil noticed we were leaking some coolant out of the uh, overflow tube on the tank here. Right here. And um, a few of you had said it's probably a blown head gasket. Uh, I don't think it was, I don't know where it was coming from. We got a bunch up there. I don't know. I suppose there's something possible there's something more wrong, but yeah, there might be. The uh, gasket on the coolant tank was cracked. And so we thought that it was uh, expanding in here, going into the, the overflow tank over there. But when it was cooling down, it was letting air in, so it wasn't sucking it back out. But I could be wrong. I don't see anything over here. But I do up there, so maybe it is a head gasket. Or the fans blowing it around, one of the two. Uh, there could be something totally different. I don't really know. We'll let her cool down here for a minute. Maybe we can take it back to the farm, top off the coolant, and see if we get it happening again. But I don't know what else to do. She cooled right down. The engine oil level was good, but not excessively high when I checked it. So we're not getting coolant into the oil. I don't think there is oil in the coolant from the looks of it so I, I'm not sure um, we're gonna run back to the farm though let her cool down see if we can't top off the uh, pressure tank up there the, the reservoir tank over on this side is full though so it gives me concern that maybe there's something else going on not sure it's all right we're we, we got a field ready to be planted um, we could do that I kind of wanted to go look around at some more fields anyway so we'll be fine well, I'm not sure what is going on here. I don't like that we have all this mess up there where you can clearly see it running down the side of the block, but none of that is wet. It's wet down here, like it's spewing out of this hose. So I'm really not sure what the problem is. We're gonna let her cool down though, because it's too hot to do anything to it now anyway. But that's not a real promising looking situation so all right uh let's go check some other fields i guess we'll do that and then if we can't figure anything out we can always plant beans well okay stop beeping there you go i came over to look at some fields we've got that are a little bit farther from home like eight nine miles to the northeast and they're a little wet. This one's not horribly wet, but it's not dry. We got another one a mile down the road here. The other one I checked back about three miles was way too wet. So, not going there. Here's the other one we've got over here. Be really nice to farm these all together. I can already see some wet on top of it. Okay, stop beeping at me. We're gonna walk so we can see over the hill, see how much water sitting down there, but I doubt we're coming here either. In fact, I already know we're not coming here because the other one is too wet and we're gonna farm them together because I'm not coming over here and doing 30 acres and then coming all the way back and doing another 60 when they're right down the road from each other. So, 
we're just going to get an idea where this one is at. You can see though, some of the weeds are starting to get away from us. I don't like that. That's what happens when you get later into May. You've had some warm weather. The weeds really can get started and growing and then they get big. And then we end up with the situations like we had earlier today with that volunteer wheat where it just hangs wet and plugs stuff up and doesn't dry out. That's a problem. All right. Oh, well, we'll get there. Nothing I can do about it. Well, good news, there's no water down in the big hole down there. That's what I was afraid of. Likely due to the fact that we haven't got any big rains. That's the thing. All of the rains that we've gotten in the last three weeks, four weeks, have been two tenths, three tenths, half inch, like nothing hardly bigger than a half inch. They just come every two or three days so consistently we haven't been able to get dried out. Um, so no, no major flooding or big water, but even here on the high ground, it's just goo. It's, it's not, and the top inch maybe is workable, but everything below that is nasty, wet, clumpy, not gonna work. So we wait. All right, this is an already planted field. This is a field that we planted on day one of corn planting. Uh, I came out here yesterday. I'm going to do an emergence flagging test. Uh, we did one of these last year uh, in the plot field right by the farm or right by my house. And I'm probably going to do another one there this year too. But I wanted to do one out here in this early planted corn to see if the emergence is less even than what we got last year. And so essentially what we've got here is we've got two flags. They are 17 feet, 5 inches apart. And there should be 32,000 seeds between those two flags. Or I'm sorry, 30 two seeds between those flags. One one thousandth of an acre. Uh, we planted at 32,000, so we should have 32 seeds in there. Which means we should get 32 corn plants. And what I want to know is how evenly they come out of the ground. So I have some green flags here that say day one on them. And we're going to go through right now and see if there's any poking through. In fact, I already see a couple. And we're going to put a flag on them that says day one. I was here yesterday and placed the white flags. None of them had come out of the ground yet. So anything that has come up uh, that we can see up today has done so in the last 24 hours. It is a quarter to five. I was here at five yesterday. It's close enough. Uh, and then we'll come back tomorrow and we'll put blue flags for day two. And then we'll follow this all the way through um, the end of the year and pull the ears and just see what kind of differences there is based on what day they emerged. So uh, we're going to do this here and then we're probably going to do it on the plot field, which was planted like a week later. Um, but it'll be better for visuals for... Uh, field day and that kind of stuff or I don't know maybe I'll wait and do it on some of the last planted corn uh, just to see the difference I don't know I don't know but we're gonna start here so some of them you gotta look real close but you see that that's a corn plant and we are gonna consider it emerged and right there's a corn plant that is emerged so let's see how many we find all right well that's what we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which doesn't feel great, frankly, but um, considering there was zero yesterday, and I expect there to be the vast, vast majority of them up by the end of by tomorrow, um, I'm okay with it. I think we'll be okay. Some of them you got to look really hard to see, um, but my rule is if I can see it, it is up or it's emerged, but I cannot touch or move any dirt because I am sure that if I just scratch the dirt here a little bit, we could find a whole bunch that are sitting right under the surface, you know, that are ready to poke through. See, look at these, here's some. And so we've got one, one here, one here, one here. I'm sure there's one right in here that if we, yep, see right there. We couldn't see it, but he's right there. And there's one. There we got a bug. Look at that. Millipede. So, point being is they are all right there. Um, but I will not disturb any dirt in that row where we're doing this testing. So if I can't see them, uh, then they don't count. If I can see them, they do. Even if it's kind of pushing the clod out of the way and you got to look underneath it. Like that first one. But it's there. So, uh, yeah. We'll see how we do tomorrow. So, 7 of 32 would be just under 25% emergence in the first 24 hours. Like I said, that doesn't feel great, but if tomorrow we're up to 
25 plus, I'll feel okay. Because those could have all come up, all the ones that are there could have all come up in the last <coughs> four hours, for all I know. Five hours. <coughs> so anything that we see tomorrow, instead of 24 hours, maybe it's a 30-hour emergence window. And that feels pretty darn good to me. Um, we'll see. So there's somebody working ground just to the south here. It's not us. I'm going to go back to the farm. Dad, Dad was there. He just called me asking about the tractor. We'll see if it's cooled down, if we can get that... Um, cap off of the pressure tank and maybe add some coolant into it and we'll go back and run it some more and see what happens I guess I don't know all right dad and I were consulting on this tractor our pressure tank over there is low it's not full but it's not empty uh, it's low this wetness up here or uh, staining gives us a lot of concern and uh, the engine oil level it's, it's just above the full mark, and I don't remember it being above the full mark when I checked it earlier today. I think we're, I think we're, I think we got major problems. So, I thought about topping that tank off, going back to the field and running and seeing what happens. But I don't think we're going to do that. I think we're going to park this, we're going to unhook the disc, we're going to hook the 9R up to the disc. We've got lots of power. And, um... We'll use that on the disc tonight, maybe tomorrow morning, get enough done that Phil can plant all day tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll switch back to the field cultivator once we have somewhere that we can go and field cultivate. That's the thing, we don't even have anywhere we can use it right now. So it's going to be a pain in the butt switching tractors back and forth. That's kind of what we got to do right now. All right, well, we're going to leave that tractor right there. I'll call the dealer in the morning, have them come and look at it. I just unhooked the disc right there in the driveway because that's easier. We're going to finish fueling up our tractor here and uh, get the fuel cultivator unhooked. All right, we got the fuel cultivator unhooked here. So the, uh, the, the hitch, the tongue on the fuel cultivator is different than on the disc. It's category 5 versus category 4. Which means we need the uh, little converter, smaller hitch pin, to hook up the disc. I think it's in the shop. I hope it's in the shop because I didn't see it on the tractor. So we're going to go find that here. And then it should be pretty easy to do. And this is uh, definitely a case of way, way overpowered. Way overpowered for that disc. But we've pulled it with this before. Handles it real well. You can go as fast as you want. disc is tiny behind this tractor. Oh well. So the fuel cultivator we pull is 44 feet wide or 44 foot track space. It's a 45 foot fuel cultivator. Uh, this is 29 foot. We take a 28 foot track spacing. So yeah, significant size difference, but we go fast. Uh, we're doing 9.8. So as long as the packer's not bouncing, that's kind of what we got to watch. Make sure the packer doesn't start bouncing uh, and making a rough finish. But this disc is meant and designed to be pulled shallow and fast. And so uh, the 8430 is borderline on having enough horsepower to pull it. Like it's a little undersized. This tractor is way oversized. Somewhere in the middle is what we need. But that's what we got for now. All right. Well, we got this 35 done and we're back to where we started this morning in that... Um, we stubble stuff there, so we, we got to do end rows yet in the back here, and then I think we're just going to keep working right across there. That window is filthy. Oh, well. It's still dusty. All this is working up really nice. Like, I, I like the job we're doing, um, but it'll be interesting to see over there if that's is much better than the field elevator was or how that uh, how it looks. It's also warm and sunny and windy and dried out tremendously in the five hour well what time is it now six seven seven o'clock it's been seven hours more or less since we started over there so it's drier now than it was okay i suppose i should update you guys well we jumped across the fields here and uh we're working across this we're not doing a fantastic job but we're doing what we need to do um this volunteer wheat got too big. We should have sprayed it sooner, and we didn't, and that's probably my fault, because Dad had mentioned it a couple of times, and I'm like, ah, 
it'll probably be fine. We'll get through with the field cultivator. And finally, he came out and sprayed it. And we should have done it a couple weeks sooner. Uh, my bad. Um, but anyway, the disc is kind of working it down. It's at least, it's not completely taking it out, but it is knocking stuff down and, and spreading it enough that if we let it air out tonight and tomorrow, probably early tomorrow afternoon, we can maybe come down here with the field cultivator and, and uh, work through it. So, yeah. Um, the back corner over there is really wet. Other than that, it's not too bad, except for the lowest of the low spot up over there that I had to go around. But I'm not worried about that spot either. So we'll see how the back corner over there is along the trees. Um, I don't know. I mean, we got lots of dust. It's really, most of it's working up pretty decent. We just got way too much residue out here uh, to do a good job. And it's a little clumpy in spots. So there's no way we would be able to plant right into it after doing this. It definitely needs to be worked again. Got dark on us. We're just about done finishing up uh, in the point of this field. So we're back over here. Oh, that's not, you can't see very good there at all. Okay. So we're back over here. Uh, we do have a spot over here we got to fill in yet. There's a wet hole to go around. One that we have always farmed around, except for Brock. Brock likes to go right through the middle of that. Don't you, Brock? Yeah. Anyway, and then we got to do uh, up in front by the road there. And we'll wrap this one up. Maybe if we're lucky by the time we're done tonight, there'll be some northern lights out there in front of us. I hear they've been around the last couple of nights, but I haven't yet seen them. I've checked a couple of times at night, and the Friday night, the first night they had, they were supposed to be really uh, bright. It was cloudy here, so we didn't get to see them then, and then the last couple nights, I haven't seen them. Maybe tonight, they say. Well, we got it. We'll see what it looks like in the daylight tomorrow. Um, it's, it's not great out here. But it should air out overnight and dry off a little bit. And then we hit it with a field cultivator and I think it'll plant pretty decent. So I'm hoping we can get that done tomorrow. I'm not going to guarantee it. I think first thing in the morning, um, we'll see what Dad's got going on. But he might run this uh, tractor and disc here on another field of disc corn stalks. So that Phil can have enough to plant tomorrow. He's got about 95 acres here that we did today. Uh, that can be planted first thing in the morning, and then we got another 128 acre field, and then a 60 acre piece after that that I think are ready to go. Turn our road lights on here. So I am hoping uh, that Dad will run this and go do that. Um, I have a well driller coming tomorrow, so we're gonna make sure that we get everything ready to go for that, and uh, that, that he knows where and what and how and all the stuff. So. And we got to make a phone call to a dealer about our tractor, I guess. No northern lights yet. Anyway, that's all for me for tonight. Check back tomorrow. Hopefully we'll have another good productive day. Actually get something planted. Uh, and then they're calling for rain tomorrow night. Actually, there was a slight chance tonight, but I still see the stars and the moon. And I hope we don't get anything. So have a great night. We'll see you guys tomorrow.